Hi again guys and welcome to another installment of Rivals on GT Sport in particular and we haven't actually featured Rivals now in a few weeks and one of the most popular Rivals matches that we've ever done was on Gran Turismo 6, not too surprisingly, and the actual episode was not one which I expected to do all that well. But it did and it continues to and that was the NSX concept versus the Toyota FT1 concept. I didn't assume that that would be a really popular one, but it has turned out to be. Now though, we're taking that to the next level. We're updating the cars involved and also swapping out one of the cars involved because now we're taking it from the concept NSX to the production state NSX, of course on GT Sport, and then replacing the FT1 concept, which of course isn't on GT Sport, there's only the Vision GT versions, with the newer shape Nissan GTR. Which of course, if you think about it, is actually more of a direct rival for the NSX than the FT1 was, because the FT1, at least as far as we know, is not going to be a production car. That is not going to be the new Supra. So, these cars have always been rivals in terms of top tier JDM performance, but their rivalry isn't as intense as, say, the Skyline versus the Supra. But, these cars are still very much so direct rivals, and as such, it'll be very interesting to find out which way it swings, because both cars are very good, so how's it going to pan out? Well, as usual, we'll break down each car on its own first of all, with a mini-review of its pros and cons, and then put them in a head-on battle. First of all, then, we have the production version of the Honda NSX, a car which, of course, we've been waiting for in the Gran Turismo franchise for a couple of years now. We had the Concept. The Concept version is okay, but there's not that much that you can do to it. Visually, though, the production NSX is one of the relatively few cars to remain very close to the Concept version in terms of design. It's very, very similar. And usually concepts do change quite a bit. If you compare it to something like the RX-8 concept, for instance, for Mazda, it's a considerably different looking car. Now, as far as this one goes, there's a much bigger jump from the first and second generation NSX to this one than there is for the GTR. Because the GTR and also the Skyline GTRs have always been very much so digital JDM cars. At least as far back as that was a thing. Whereas the NSX from the early 90s in its inception was much more what I would call an engineered performance car in the likes of the BMW M3, the McLaren F1, that kind of thing where there was a lot of clever thought behind the car in terms of the digital input but the way the car actually performed and the way it was laid out and the feel that it gave you was much more mechanical and analogue than digital. It didn't feel like the car was babying you, it felt like it was very much a driver's car with a lot of thought put into it. Whereas with the GTRs, they feel very directly digital with a very hands-on approach from the computers to give you that help and that aid to make it a dominating track car. Neither of those ways are necessarily better than the other because they're both brilliant. But with this newer NSX, the focus has shifted a lot more to a very GTR-style way of doing things. It's got part-time all-wheel drive with a hybrid system, electric power coming into the mix as well, and it feels like a much more digital car. It's a new age NSX, which isn't just a facelift and a revision of the existing concepts, it is a new car, very much so. Now, in GT Sport, it's one of my go-to drift cars. I love drifting the vehicle, it's so easy to drift with, it's very playful, but at the same time it's not challenging to drift at all. It's forgiving, but playful at the same time, which is exactly what you want for a fun aspect of the car, but for getting down a good lap time, well, sometimes that can work against you, a little bit like the Mustang, which, as I've said a number of times, is also a very playful car on GT Sport. However, the NSX has huge tuning potential. N900 category is nothing to be sniffed at in terms of potential. In a straight line, it's rapid, it's quick off the line, it's quick for top end speed, the handling is good, but maybe a little bit too tail happy sometimes. But overall, it's a great performance car. How though does it really measure up compared to that R35? Well, the R35 hasn't made anywhere near as much of a jump from its previous incarnation, which is still another R35, just pre-facelift, 
than the NSX has. The NSX is an altogether new machine that just shares the same name, whereas the GTR is still a GTR. It's exactly what you expect from a GTR. 2 plus 2, all-wheel drive, very computer and tech heavy, and very physically heavy and large as well. So, with that in mind, has this one made a huge jump, given that the R35 is already a great performance car, and certainly, as far as street cars go, a force to be reckoned with even without any tuning, this one though can be brought all the way up to the N1000 class, and it's possibly the best all-round N1000 car in the game. Not necessarily the fastest. The Veyron is quicker in a straight line, the LaFerrari can be quicker through the corners, but for overall ability, especially for the price and with how forgiving and beginner-friendly it is, it's a pretty difficult all-rounder to beat. Well, in terms of the lap times, the GTR pretty easily wins this match. The NSX is not slow, and to put it into some kind of perspective, I found the NSX to be about one to two seconds slower than my Group 3 category Corvette race car. That's not bad. Now, of course, that is a 900 horsepower NSX, but still, that is a street car. With the GTR, it did a 139, so a whole lot quicker. The best part of about four seconds quicker, basically. So, the GTR is most definitely quicker, and you can very quickly feel that, trust me, it's a faster car, that's for sure. But the final question is, of course, how do the numbers compare? Because with these rivals' matches, they really can swing either way when it comes to actual lap times and on-paper spec. So, let's find out. Well, when you actually break down the numbers of both cars, in particular in their fully tuned form to show the ultimate potential that both of them have, it is interesting actually to notice just how one-sided the battle becomes. I didn't really have an exact idea of how this battle would pan out and the results in terms of points that would happen. I thought that the GTR would be very difficult to beat, but I thought given all of the updates to the NSX, given the sheer numbers that it has, it could put up a pretty good fight. And it kind of does, but at the same time, as we'll see as we run through the numbers, not necessarily a good enough fight. So first of all we have the price, and it easily of course goes to the GTR because it costs roughly the same as what the Black Edition did on GT6, 95 grand. That is streets ahead, and way cheaper than the NSX, but at the same time that's not surprising, because that's always been the case. The NSX was always about 40 grand more, or even more if you're talking about the Type R. So that's not too surprising, even 200 grand is still very, very good for the NSX, and that is cheaper if memory serves than something like a Huracan from Lamborghini, which is just as good a rival really for that car. But of course, the GTR gets the point. As far as the class categories which they can run in, as I've said before, for these N category rivals matches, I base the point not on which one can go higher, but which one can span the most classes, making the car more usable. And interestingly, these cars kind of cancel each other out, because the lower category goes to the NSX, because it can go all the way down to N400, but the higher category goes to the GTR, because it can go all the way up to N1000. So overall, they actually have the same amount of classes that both of them can run in. Personally, I would say that the NSX is still better, because the N400 class is a more useful one than N1000. But that's arbitrary and it's down to personal preference, so purely factually speaking, we're going to give them both a point because they both span just as many categories within the N classes. As far as engine size, well we're not specifically told what the capacity of the GTR is, but even though we don't know that, we can easily assume that it's at least as big as the other R35s, and probably a little bit larger. That means it's at least around a 3.8 litre, which is easily bigger than the 3.5 litre of the NSX. Interestingly, the NSX had a much smaller jump in terms of capacity over the previous one, which was a 3.2 already, than the GTR did, because the R34 was of course a 2.6, so that's a much bigger jump for this car to make. As far as power, once again it goes to the GTR because it's got way more, put simply, almost, well, close enough to 100 horsepower more, only two off. 988 horsepower to 890 on the NSX. Both are fantastic, don't get me wrong, that's a huge amount of power for a streetcar. Both of them are among the most powerful streetcars in the game. As far as torque as well, this isn't too surprising, and wasn't too surprising to me, but 
yeah, the GTR gets the point there. The GTR always has a huge amount of torque. Torque isn't really Honda's thing anyway, so having as much torque as this one does, thanks primarily to the hybrid system as well, is actually really good for a Honda. To have 665 pound feet is a big deal. Hondas don't have anywhere near that, typically, if you compare that to the previous NSX, for instance. As far as weight, this is actually the one that surprised me the most. Because the NSX is always a car that you would think of as being the lighter of JDM cars. You think of the Supra and the Skyline as being a bit heavier, and the RX-7 and the NSX as being lighter. That is no longer the case, because the NSX, because of being a hybrid, is now much heavier. Plus you've got the all-wheel drive system to factor in, which is part of, of course, the hybrid system. And it weighs more. Even after the full weight loss package, it still weighs more than the GTR. So very interestingly, and surprisingly to me, the GTR gets the point. As far as horsepower per ton, well of course, it's lighter and has more power, so the R35 handily gets the point there, just under 80 horsepower per ton more. But still, 610 from the NSX is of course not bad, that's serious supercar territory. And of course, as we've already said, the lap times are, well, pretty obvious. <laughs> as a deciding factor, the GTR is a lot quicker with the 139.4 to the 143.1 of the NSX, a huge difference. The NSX wasn't slow, by any means, it's just that the GTR is such a dominating force. So overall that does mean that the GTR gets every point possible, whereas the NSX only gets the point that's equal, which is the amount of classes that it covers. So an interestingly one-sided battle, and one which I didn't actually expect to be that one-sided. Overall though, both cars are most definitely worth checking out. I think most people probably have both by now on GT Sport because they are pretty affordable, plus you have a pretty good chance of winning them. But overall, I personally prefer the NSX, in terms of overall ability, value, and sheer speed though, of course, it's the R35. So overall, that's it for this particular Rivals match. I'll see you guys next time, and as always, thanks for watching.